Okay, this is part two of uh, doing the door. Um, part one, I basically uh, fit the door to the car. I made the adjustments on the back latch and also the forward hinge and the weldment. And I made sure that the door fit to the car. And uh, then I went and modded the frame for clearance of the window tracks and uh, got the window to operate within the door and welded the frame back together in the correct location that I knew it needed to be in while it was on the car. And all that stuff's covered in that first video. Um, where I'm at right now is I've got the door on the car um, and I've got the window uh, coming up and down and the very first thing that I started working was the engagement of the window with this uh, flange here. Um, the important thing when you, when you get this window uh, going up and down is to make sure that it seals along the flange all the way around the uh, door um, in all these locations. So it's the forward part, the upper part, and the aft part here. Um, all that has to seal correctly. And then the other thing that you want to watch out for is the, uh, the rear uh, quarter glass here. Uh, there's a space uh, or a drop off from the glass right here in this area and uh, as you can see my uh, the pillar here uh, sits a little bit too low when everything else works nicely so um, I think uh, this is probably the same problem a lot of guys are running into where just the uh, shape of that door when everything's uh, lined up you know and the gaps right all the way down and, 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 and flush everywhere um, what happens is that pillar is actually going in too far. Um, so uh, the first thing I did is I came up here and um, I noticed that this door was coming up and hitting this. So um, I have the door pretty much centered, or the window, um, pretty much centered in the, uh, in the door here. Um, I put a spacer, a little bit more than what I uh, told you in the uh, number you know the part one video and right in here there's like a about three eighths of an inch spacer to get that track uh, to the point where that door or where the point that the window here is not hitting that um, and what will happen is right here you see it looks like it's going to hit it but as it comes up it actually starts to come up and ends up riding up on top of that flange the way that it should um, I use the uh, fuel tubing here I split it and basically when I split it I put it on that flange and that allows me to actually judge the way that that window sits on there and that tubing actually matches the felt uh, curvature and height uh, you know at the halfway point so once you use uh, tubing you don't have to cut your uh, felt uh, seals up um, as long as they, as long as the height here where it meets the window is about the same once it's attached to the uh, flange there. Um, so anyway, um, I knew that that was going to hit. So what I did is I took a three inch cutting wheel and I cut in the radius of the flange all the way up to this point. I'd originally stopped there, but noticed that the radius wasn't a nice radius through this whole area. So I went ahead and extended the cut all the way to the top and that way this entire piece was basically floating here and I could bend it to the curvature of the window exactly the way that I needed it. So that's what I did and then I took the, uh, the rubber uh, seal to kind of simulate where that's going to be and um, I got that uh, while that was hanging there I rolled the window up made sure that it was coming across the seals up here on the top and uh, also the seals there at the same time and then I took pieces of fiberglass and came to the back side just a couple of pieces I didn't glass this whole thing again I just took two or three pieces of glass a little bit of uh, matte mold mixed some resin up and just kind of tacked that thing in place um, and I did that so that um, I wouldn't have to you know in case it wasn't right when it cured um, I didn't want to have to redo all that glass work again so I just tacked it in place uh, did the run with the window, uh, made sure everything was right, and then I went ahead and glassed all that back in. Uh, once I have the body off, I will put some strips of glass back here uh, to, to reinforce the backside. It does go all the way through, but you want to have some uh, 
full sheets uh, on the back side and that way you'll uh, strengthen it a little bit more you won't have a that area is going to continually get impacted and, and that seal is going to be on there so you want to make sure that's nice and sturdy. Um, so anyway the, the track uh, or the uh, window tracks up the door opening uh, very well and uh, the latch is adjusted down here if you notice it's just thumb pressure and I can open it and uh, close it and um, if I want I can actually hook up the um, door popper which is a couple of cables and it just pops open like that and notice this is just an actuator there is no popper but because of the angle of the doors on the GTM they fall outward automatically so I'm not doing anything except hitting that motor and it just pops open so all that stuff's all uh, set up um, I gotta say that as you're doing the uh, the doors uh, you know you, you get a kit and then you think everything's gonna work and, and you're really reluctant to just start cutting into stuff you know um, but with the doors just uh, bite your tongue and, and uh, realize that you're gonna have to do it anyway uh, so just dive into it and uh, start working it. Uh, you know, the more I think about it, um, the, the custom fitting for, for all these various things on the car, um, you know, I, I sometimes I get on Factory 5's case for the uh, lack of, uh, uh, you know, more instructions in the manual, but, you know, as far as fit and finish, it is a lot of custom work if you want it right, but, uh, you know, the, so the parts and everything, and the, you know, the fact that they don't fit exactly the way they need to is, is understandable. Uh, but I still think that uh, they could do a little bit better job on the, on the manual because there's a lot of guys out there that, like me, that spend hours and hours, you know, banging our head against the wall trying to figure this stuff out. And uh, sometimes it's really hard to stop what you're doing to go, you know, searching on the internet for, for other people's pain. Um, but that's the way it is, so that's what you got to do. Um, here on the back of the door, uh, some of the areas that you'll be back and forth with, uh, probably you know 20 or 30 times before you uh, get it right, is this hinge back here. Um, you know the way that this meets the door. There's actually a little mark right here. It's contact. It's barely contacting that uh, that uh, striker. You know where it, where it engages the latch. And, uh, you know, I, I've got to the point where I'm just going to do like a, like a little recess there and just so I don't have to worry about that thing like that because it's, it's so close that I, I could probably get it not to touch, but by the time it's all painted and everything, I don't want to worry about it. So I'm just going to kind of dish that out a little bit and create a little more room for that uh, thing to go sliding past that. It's at a bad angle, um, you know, in relationship to the latch because you have that you know, you get in a straight line when the door is closing, uh, you intersect that piece uh, because of the height of the, the back of the door and the fact that, the, that it's 90 degrees to the uh, outside of the door. Um, it should have been angled in a little bit more, but uh, you know, again, it's, it's just what it is and so you gotta make it work. Um, the latch here, you know, you notice that cutout's really big. I've, I've made various cuts during various stages of the, uh, you know, putting these doors together, and and I would recommend that you just cut a nice big opening there, and and uh, get it right, and then go back and you know create a, a cover and, and re glass in that area. It'll take a lot less time uh, to to give yourself a nice big opening to play around with, and then go back and re glass it uh, than it will if you if you try to be neat about it and uh, you know and, and and trim it a little bit at a time like I started doing. Uh, the same thing is in the front. You know, these where the hinges. They actually point or, or come out of the front of the door there. You want to give yourself a good um, cutout. You can't really see it, it's dark, but, but where those hinges come out of the front of the door, you know, that's one of the first things you do is you cut those slots uh, for those three uh, ears on the front of that uh, hinge. And uh, you just want to give yourself plenty of room uh, so that you can make adjustments, you know, in and out and, and so forth. Um, and not worry about it because those those probably need to be sealed uh, anyway and uh, you don't see them um, and you're, you're going to run big black seals around them 
and uh, so don't worry about it just make those cutouts and uh, you know you can go back and neaten it up later that's really the whole thing on this door you you, you know you're, it's not it's not going to be neat uh, as, as you do all this stuff you again you got to kind of you know put the gloves on and, and go to town and and uh, make your cuts make your adjustments and and uh, do what you got to do and then uh, once you get that you'll be a lot happier less frustrated and and then you can go back and neaten things up uh, later on when you uh, when you know everything fits uh, the last thing I have right now and, and I'm trying to figure it out is how I'm going to get this pillar out so I started looking down here at where I can cut it uh, to pull it out a little bit uh, this window is going to be sitting on a seal later on so that'll bring it out even more um, you know up here I could I could obviously uh, pull it out but actually I got to come up even higher uh, than, than what you're seeing right now so uh, there's no way the door is going to do that it's not going to let that thing go so this thing has to be cut at the base uh, relocated and then reglassed uh, the challenge there is that this is actually a channel. You can't see the inside of it because it's kind of like a tube. Um, the front and the back, if you look here, it's a box structure. And so you're not going to be able to get to the uh, all sides of this thing when you glass it. Uh, so probably what I'll do is I'll, I'll make the cut, I'll get it uh, located correctly, and then I'll come back in here and uh, probably grind quite a bit of this down so I can get a nice uh, few layers of glass in there to build that area back up and not lose the strength of that box structure. Um, that's probably pretty important. Again, this is an area that's going to, people are going to be grabbing it and, you know, 